When Christopher Columbus sailed to the New World, the success of his journey relied on the ability to sail by instinct and sense of direction, which helped him navigate the vast ocean and stay on course. Columbus's navigation technique is an early example of how human qualities made the difference in leading to a discovery. Though technology has changed, new machines have been built, new tools are available, it is still human beings that bring their unique skills to the new era of exploration. Creativity, observation, adaptability, and decision-making all come together, adding a human factor to exploration. This is the International Space Station. From over 200 miles above the Earth, the station is where humans continue the legacy of exploration. Here in space, the value of the human element is evident on a daily basis. As station crews adapt, make decisions, and make observations while they live and work away from our planet. One area where this is especially true is that of scientific research. Essentially free from the force of gravity, a variety of scientific disciplines can be studied in ways not possible on Earth. Most experiments require some amount of hardware and machinery to operate, but on the station, they also have the benefit of human crew members to help the investigation along. In almost every experiment we do on station, human intervention adds a certain sparkle, adds a certain measure of success that without it uh, the experiment would be diminished. Human observation and intervention is not new to space research. Like contemporary researchers on board the International Space Station, Shannon Lucid also conducted science experiments during her mission on board the Russian space station Mir. And she also personally contributed to the success of some of her investigations. During an investigation involving the study of candle flames in space, she discovered that the flames failed to create an image on the provided video cameras. With no image, the experiment would be a complete loss. Lucid decided to take matters into her own hands. Uh, I started out doing these experiments, and then I uh, looked at the video, and there wasn't anything there. So the next time I did, did one, I looked, uh, I just, you know, squinted underneath the uh, glove box, which we had shrouded in uh, black material so that no light could get in. And I could see why, because the flames that were burning were very, very faint blue. They were not the high energy flames like you have down here on Earth. I resorted to the old fashioned method of drawing what I had seen. The flames that we had there, I call them like little baby igloos because it's just like a little blue igloo over uh, uh, every wick. And the, I also made some observations about what was going on when the flame went out. It looked like a little dandelion. I, you know, I reported this down to the ground and this was totally unexpected. So they were very, very excited about uh, the data that uh, I was able to bring back. They were very excited that I was able to observe it and draw it and give them the data since their original plan of having it on video didn't work. As humans continue to conduct investigations in space, the human element will continue to play a part in the search for the elusive scientific discoveries that await. And these are the fundamental observations that any one of them, them can be the key to the, uh, the striking of gold, the hitting of the home run. And that is where we are aimed in space. And it will not be possible to do with machines alone. The optimal combination is when the human and the machine work together, each doing what they are good at. From the beginning of space travel, humans and machines have always worked in unison to achieve their exploration goals. In the space station era, this relationship has only strengthened. Robotic arms, controlled by their human operators, move the giant pieces of the space station together for assembly. 
but in many cases, it is only the human hand that can finish the job. With small connectors and bolts, humans finish what the machines start, completing the more intricate assembly tasks. But especially moving large structures and attaching them, you know, that's, that's you know, the bread and butter of our robotic arms. They do that better than anything. And there are some things that it's very difficult to design a machine to do to go to a third place. Uh, just something as simple as tightening a bolt. So um, I think we, we've nailed down what's smarter to do with people and smarter to do with robotics. In the future, it may be that robots and humans work even closer together, as in this test of a teleoperated robot, a robot controlled by a human assisting an astronaut. The partnership between humans and robots has yet to see its full potential. There may be no more obvious example of the human element in space than the spacewalk. A human in a suit, a spaceship for one, bringing their unique talents directly into the environment of space. Well, for me, it's kind of like uh what I saw growing up as a kid. My dad worked in the steel mills in Gary, Indiana, and he'd pick up his lunchbox and march out to his truck and drive up to, up to work. And that's kind of the way I see uh, doing spacewalks, is that you're, you're the hands-on kind of guy, you're the mechanic, you're the, the tradesman, the craftsman, and you're out there doing what human beings have done for centuries, except you're doing it with a different set of tools and certainly in a different environment than what people have experienced in the past. That workman approach has come in handy many times as human ingenuity and intervention have often been called into play to retrieve or repair satellites in space. One such occurrence happened unexpectedly when the Gamma Ray Observatory, a sophisticated satellite designed to study the cosmos, failed to deploy a crucial antenna. It was human intervention that saved the mission. I crawled out into the foot restraint and manually deployed the antenna boom up into position and then used a manual wrench to, to lock it into place. Fortunately, we were able to, with human intervention, to completely and successfully deploy the satellite into space and it did some tremendous science for many years. Being there with an eye and a mind to still need the human in a loop, certainly robots can do things that people can't, but certainly the vice versa is also very true. Many other satellites have been saved by human intervention the most famous of which being the Hubble Space Telescope, where human hands upgraded parts that were not originally meant to be touched. These upgrades allow the telescope to peer further and clearly see more of our universe, literally rewriting astronomy books. The human element outside the spacecraft has time and again yielded many successes, and as the vision for space exploration sets its sights even farther from Earth, the possibilities for more discoveries seem endless. Just as the human factor has played a positive role on the space station and shuttle missions close to Earth, the importance of the human element will only increase as we explore our solar system, returning to the moon and journeying on to Mars. Once again, machines work alongside humans for the success of this endeavor. This time, acting as scouts, searching for crucial information about our future arenas of discovery. The machines become more sophisticated as the exploration challenges become greater and greater. But the mechanized missions are only a beginning to the journey. Humans will follow, building on what is learned from their robotic counterparts. Sometimes you can monitor them from the ground, and the humans on the loop on the ground can make those decisions for that robot that's out there, like they are doing on Mars now. They can inspect rocks, they can do certain analyses on those rocks, and, and scientists learn a great deal from that. Humans are needed in order to think. We, we go out and we make decisions based on what we see. The robots only do some things that people can't do, and the people else can do some things that robots can't do, and together you can do a lot more than either one alone. And you can't leave the human element out if you want to achieve the best that you can achieve with the resources available. Machines are great. We can't explore space without them. 
but we don't understand now how to give a machine uh, critical thinking, adaptability, uh, decision-making capacity. None of this can be done the way a human can do it. We will have detail after detail of where the human interceded, changed the course of events, repaired equipment, made key observations, made decisions uh, that allowed the, uh, the amazing frontiers to be opened. Our history-making experiences on the moon may provide the best insight as to what successes and discoveries can be possible by adding the human element to the exploration of the solar system. Humankind's first landing on the moon succeeded only because of human intervention. When Neil Armstrong took manual control of the spacecraft, steering past an area littered with boulders, it was the first of many examples of humans making a difference in lunar exploration. If you go back to the Apollo days, it was the human beings who noticed, oh, this rock is very different. And they noticed one that had a slight orange coloration. Oh, hey, there is boring soil. It's all over. And they picked up that rock, and then when the lunar scientists studied that rock, it gave them insights into lunar origins that totally transformed the way that they thought about how our planetary system happened to come into existence. I think that that's what having a human there adds. It adds flexibility. It allows you to deal with the unexpected. Like the moon, the planets of our solar system await for the human element to reveal other unexpected discoveries. The vision we have of exploration of other planets, the solar system, someday beyond, will be achieved. And humans involved in that will be critical to success. Rarely do our discoveries come on schedule according to a plan. It is generally the human in the loop involved that makes the critical observation that changes the course of the investigation, experiment, exploration. This is what we're learning today. This is what we'll learn on the International Space Station, on the Moon, and then on Mars. Finally, there is another benefit that the human element in space adds that is more fundamental. The need, the desire to be there in person and explore. We go to places where human beings typically can't live because these environments offer discoveries that defy our imagination. You're going to learn something new. You're going to learn something counter to your intuition. You're going to say, wow. And then, of course, when you send human beings, that is what is going to be the pay dirt in terms of getting a large return back from the mission. Because the human beings are really good at improvising and changing things on the spot and continuing the investigation in a completely different manner. Just as Columbus used his instincts to steer his boats to a new world, today's explorers and those that follow will continue to use human creativity, adaptability, and observation to help them make new discoveries. It will be this human element that helps make future exploration a much greater success and fulfill our desire to explore. For many other examples of how humans make a difference in space exploration, visit this NASA website.